who have all made it to Abidjan. Dear Sadhguru, one of the world's voices and leaders on soil conservation and land in, the, uh, in this day and age, having him, uh, having you here is absolutely fantastic and we welcome you. Namaskaram and uh, good morning to everyone here. Well, in this August audience, I don't have to uh, go about talking about all the horrific statistics we have about all the negative things that are happening with the land and soil on this planet. But as a solution, I see definitely there are many nuances to the solution uh, and the very important aspects which are <laughs> not small in number are complexity. But I feel the most important thing if we want to achieve something is as we have found of all the conventions, one convention which bore positive and conclusive result was uh, the 1987 Montreal Protocol where we focused on the ozone holes and largely it was fixed because of uh, single-pointed action. I think a time has come where that kind of action is needed for soil. Separating soil from every other issue, though they are significant and important, it's important that we separate soil from the other aspects because all these other aspects are relevant to our lives only as long as soil is alive. What is it that we can do? I think the most important thing is to put some food there for the microorganisms which is the fundamental of all life. Putting food there means organic content should rise. If you look at this across the world, not a single nation has a minimum of three percent, not even a single nation. So why can't we set this objective? All other issues are there, we can continue to attend to those things, but the most important thing is we as a generation of people keep the soil alive for future generations. Setting up three percent as a minimum average for every nation and setting up an incentive method, uh, process for the farmers to get there, making the incentives attractive enough that farmers will aspire to be there. And once they get there, the industry and business to facilitate carbon credit systems for the farmers is a second line of incentive. The third level of incentive is, instead of just labeling uh, food products as just organic, as if the other foods are inorganic, it is not. And it's extremely difficult and it takes a whole lab process to measure the amount of fertilizer and pesticide in a given product, either a fruit or a vegetable. So, the simple thing is to measure the organic content of the soil, which can be done on the land by the farmer with a little supervision, it can be done. So we can establish three percent organic content. Those who have reached three percent organic content, these products, these agricultural products of fruit and vegetable and grain should find a different shelf in the marketplace. If it finds a different shelf in the marketplace, there is enough science to tell us if a field contains three percent organic content, what are the micronutrients which are present in the food? What are the health benefits? What are the preventive health benefits? I would like to see that all of us strive for this. In these complex issues and complex solutions, implementation becomes a huge challenge because implementation has to happen on the land. And land is not managed by scientists, land is managed by farmers. So it's extremely important, it must be a single point agenda incentive-based agenda, if inspiration, incentives and disincentives after a certain period of time is the way forward. This is my appeal to every one of you because I don't want this COP15 to end as one more convention with more paper and more paper. This must end with concrete action and action in such a way that is it's implementable. It is implementable and we will see a distinct change in the coming few years. Thank you very much for having me here.